a village in Teluk Bahang started a food bank, supplying food to local citizens. The city provides free repairs to the needy, as this kind act gather manufacturers to lower costs. Welcome to our headlines, I'm Hu Chao. In Penang, Teluk Bahang's tourism district has been severely impacted ever since the government's MCO enforcement. Locals at Teluk Bahang started a food bank based on the idea of helping people in the village. Under the pandemic, the tourism industry in Teluk Bahang was heavily impacted ever since the government's MCO was in place. Some people even went unemployed for one year as they faced life difficulties. In order to solve the issues of villagers, the county head and locals established a food bank with the ideal of saving our own village and assisting villagers in need. Many locals came in to help as love started to spread around the area. Me, brother On Ki Chuan, the most community and the community committee made plans to set the food bank here. Firstly, it operates like a center. Secondly, it is safe here. Brother On Ki Chuan has business here so he can take care of the store too. No matter what time people are here, he is always here to look over. On Ki Chuan has been running a hardware shop for 20 years in Teluk Bahang as he took on the role of a Ziji volunteer though 65% of people locally are Malaysians. Yet villagers trust Ong Ki Chuan, leaving the food bank for him to manage. When they are here to receive food, some people will feel embarrassed. We are afraid of hurting their feelings. So during interactions, we will give them the choice to pick the food ingredients they want. They will feel like they aren't here to collect food. It's like returning to a home kitchen. Whenever they need something, they can bring it back home. It's been three, four months and I'm unable to make income. Even with products to sell, no one will buy it. I am a merchant but I cannot open my store. These food supplies can last me for a month. As volunteers interact with villagers who are here to collect food, volunteers will record their backgrounds and family condition, accepting people with difficulty as care recipients and making sure that these people can be fully supported. We arrange one space with one meter distance for a simple interview to understand care recipients' needs. We will issue them a one-time 600 ringgit subsidy. This is what we are doing now. I want to thank Ji for helping me, reducing my burdens. Nowadays, you can see many people with difficulties. We should help each other no matter race. If my friend has problems, I will help him even if I've made little income. We will make it through together. Although the pandemic has separated people apart, it also in a way brought the community closer. As neighbors look out for one another, great love will circulate and aid more people in need. In Malaysia, COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted local government hospitals' arrangements. For example, cataract patient surgeries have been delayed. Therefore, Vista Eye Clinic Center and Siji have worked together, providing 100 free surgeries to impoverished cataract patients. As eyes are windows to the soul, one can see everything with them. Uh, we all have a clear lens, uh, a crystal clear lens situated here. Right? Now this crystal clear lens is transparent until we reach a certain age where it starts to show opacification, right? It can be white in colour, we call this uh, the cortical cataract, or it can slowly become a yellow, uh, that means the cataract arises from the nucleus, so this is a nuclear cataract. From yellow, if we ignore it, it will slowly become brown and maybe even black. According to a survey of Eye Department of Malaysia Bureau of Health in 10 years, about 216,000 cataract patients have lost their vision because they delayed the cataract surgery. Cataract is the number one cause of blindness in Malaysia. Everyone will suffer from cataract if you live long enough. But when the cataract starts affecting your daily lifestyle activities, that's the time we can do the surgery. We don't have to wait till the cataract become mature or hypermature. There is a person who needs to do the 
A group of people in need have to undergo cataract surgery. Since our company has equipment and our doctors are determined to help some people in need. As the pandemic takes place, it disrupts the government's original arrangement. Cataract patients have to delay their surgeries. During the pandemic period, government hospitals and clinics have to save the surgery rooms for COVID-19 patients. So many people, especially poor families and CG care recipients, cannot undergo the cataract surgery. I have been doing follow-ups with the government hospital. Government hospital said that there are no cataract surgeries. I have waited for the government hospital for more than two years. Vista Eye Clinic Center has participated in the free clinic, providing 100 free surgeries for poor cataract patients. We partnered with uh, Tsuji this time together to sponsor 100 cataract charity cases. And hopefully with this, we can be able to help them proceed with their normal life. Second is also to help the government hospital who are now focused on fighting COVID-19. The surgeries are all arranged on a Monday, which is actually our off day. So our doctors and staff comes back uh, to help out so that uh, to ensure a smoother flow of the surgery. Under the pandemic, if the patient comes to check his eyes, we need to maintain crowd order. Then we cannot have too many people here, so we cannot arrange too many patients to come here. We might need more time. In the past, my vision was very blurred as I could not see. After the surgery, I can see very clearly. Under the pandemic, Siji and Vista Eye Clinic have helped people in need so they can enjoy a broad vision. To battle COVID-19, Malaysia Armed Force has set up a field hospital at Penang General Hospital's parking lot. Siji volunteers also help with construction work, building tents in the field hospital. Volunteers also provided medical supplies and vegetarian meal boxes assisting soldiers at the hospital. As the pandemic gets more serious in Penang, Malaysia, Penang General Hospital's ICU hospital beds have been used 100 percent. Therefore, Malaysia's armed forces have set up a field hospital at the hospital parking lot since September 16th to treat more COVID-19 patients. Upon learning of the news, city volunteers have volunteered to join the construction. <laughs> We come upon requests to provide 10 tents. We're very happy to have the opportunity to contribute our efforts. We'll work together with the hospital and government. Besides tents, Siji has also provided protective clothing and N95 mask to the field hospital. They also provide vegetarian food for the soldiers at the hospital so they can eat during their shift. We learned about their contribution here. They do not have time to eat outside. So we try to help them fight the pandemic with peace of mind. Uh, for Suzy, uh, thank you very much for uh, the donation and also for your support to our army uh, personnel. Thank you for the supports in building up this field hospital and uh, we are very uh, grateful for your donation and uh, help. Facing the pandemic, Suzy volunteers have reached out to the needy so they can get through the tough times. The side effects of a COVID vaccine are very worrying to most. The internet and social media is filled with news suggesting that drinking traditional Chinese medicine cinnamon twigs before vaccination and drinking lotus root tea after vaccination can prevent thrombosis, heart disease, and improve vaccine protection. Is that true? Let's take a look. Many are worried about the possible serious side effects of COVID vaccination and use various methods to avoid these potential problems. Social media has recently been used to spread a message that a drink made from cinnamon twigs can prevent thrombosis and heart problems. If you have a headache or a little fever nausea or cold symptoms, it can help alleviate this. But if you have blood clots or heart problems, you need to do more checkups and research. Popular internet messages also mention that after the treatment, you have to drink warm lotus root soup for three days, 500 cc per day, which can cool the blood, invigorate the blood, and avoid embolism. 
It is more for clearing away the heat such as fever and other uncomfortable symptoms associated with heat stroke. It's okay to drink lotus root soup. In fact, drinking such ingredients can relieve things related to embolism. Neither TCM medicine such as cinnamon twigs and lotus root have been proven to prevent thrombosis and heart disease. Therefore, if you have any doubts about getting the vaccine, you should first discuss it with your doctor. City Foundation's construction office provides free repairs to these helpless families throughout Taiwan. City staff Chen Wenliang often visits care recipients with city volunteers and has formed a group of enthusiastic manufacturers who are willing to reduce costs in order to help the needy. My mother-in-law used to take care of him. After my mother-in-law passed away, we would take care of him. This house was built by his parents before, and it has been decades. Things will fall from above, and the cement bricks will withered and will fall. He has to go to the end of the curve when he wants to go to the toilet. There is a toilet there which is slanted. It is to rebuild it, that is, to tear down the roof. It is the RC roof. Because there was no protection in the early days, it was very close to the sea, and the salt erosion was very serious. It is like a house similar to a sea in a house, which will cause danger to the entire structure. The repair project now involves more cars. If the Ciji recipients need it, we need to buy the tools we need. If we don't buy it, it will be inconvenient for us to borrow from others. Three or four years ago, I helped the case of Lun Mei Road in Zhanghua. At the time, Yu Jingyi also came to help clean it up. He was so busy that his whole body was dirty and dusty. I didn't know him at the time. He ran over to me and told me that he wanted to use a dollar to undertake the painting project of this family. I said that the painting cost is paid by the foundation, and we can allow you to send your staff to do it this time. But no more this cheap cost. So after that, he gave Tsuji about 30% off the market price, or even 40% off when doing projects. Last year, I worked for up to 30 Tsuji care recipients. We have been to Miaoli, Nantou, Taichung, Jiayi, Yunlin. The six counties and cities have done it, and I feel very happy. During this period of time, although it was a small case, Every step of building a house could not be skipped. We mobilized a lot of brothers, sisters, and workers to come here to finally complete the case. The great earthquake of September 21st has torn many families apart. Yet it provided a chance for many to join Ciji. Dr. Hong Qifen joined Ciji because of the earthquake of September 21st. 
Going from a money and meat lover to a humble vegetarian, he is now a merciful doctor, helping people who are suffering. On September 21st, 1999, the earthquake early in the morning woke everyone up. At the time, my son and daughter studied at Chao Guang Elementary School. Once we heard that Ziji is here to rebuild the school, I became the chairman of the school the second year. Afterwards, I followed Ziji brothers and helped with several things. They asked me to tie rebar, take out the garbage and make tea. At that time, I thought, is this really what a doctor should be doing? I was quite arrogant back then. On May 12, 2008, a strong earthquake occurred across the Taiwan Straits in Sichuan, China. I first got into Zhejie around 2008, which is when the 2008 Sichuan earthquake happened. Tima asked me if I want to join the free clinics there. And after I went to China, the scenes there really shocked me. When I slept, I talked to my wife. She told me about stock prices going up. I told her about the unimaginable disasters here. I also told her that having one bed and living under a roof is good enough. After coming back to Taiwan after the 2008 experience, I started to join training sessions. So if I leave Taiwan in the future, I'll only leave to provide free clinics, relief distributions, and Ziji related events. At dinner time, 6 p.m., he picks up phone calls immediately. The same goes for 11 p.m., and at 7 a.m. in the morning, he also calls me. It's hard to find doctors like him nowadays. He is very merciful. If others are suffering, if it's within his ability, he will do his best to help. In the past, we didn't agree with Dr. Hong's involvement with Ziji, but after joining Ziji, I was more involved than him. If we have the ability to give and contribute, I feel very blessed, and as the wife of a doctor, I should be contributing more. Taking the chances to do good deeds and actively seeking to create these chances, it's as simple as keep doing the G work. In archery and shooting, stableness and proper techniques are important. NTNU's Department of Physical Education and Sports Science collaborate with GIACS, focusing on the handling of aim and balance. And through a training system, these crucial data will help athletes train more efficiently. Actually, a self sports that focus on accuracy, body stability is also an important factor. In the past, athletes rely on the field, yet with technology nowadays, they can better understand their conditions while moving. Archery requires aim, yet when an athlete draws on the bow, they have their own methods of controlling muscles. Some rely on back muscles, and through precise sensors, researchers can understand athletes' muscle usage. There are a lot of parts of back muscles. We have to focus on the high-risk parts, which are the parts that will experience muscle fatigue. We will also monitor muscles' usage in order to prevent muscle fatigue. The graph displays muscle extraction. If you use more force, the curve goes higher. Every second, we can collect 2,000 pieces of data, about 2,000 hertz. 
This is the data from Olympic athlete Tang Zijun. Researchers are able to see his muscle control while he draws the bow. In 2019, data shows most people use 30 to 40 percent power while drawing the bow, with less people using 60 to 70 percent. In 2020, after training, some athletes display better data as they have far better control over their muscles. We can see the back upper limb muscle usage. Good archery athletes will have a low movement value, meaning that they are relaxed while shooting. The high movement values mean that the athlete is tired while shooting, and this causes the risk of fatigue. With high movement value, the athlete might lose points during the competition. After the athlete stands onto the force plate, Researchers will know their balance and movement. The force plate produces accurate data, even capturing the 0.1 centimeter tiny changes. No matter if it's archery or shooting, great athletes share commonalities such as being stable and having movements during aiming lower than one centimeter, sometimes even lower than 0.5 centimeters. Before shooting, we have to stabilize our feet all the way after shooting. We should maintain our balance throughout the process. When we have unstable conditions, it happens at the start when we are finding balance. And before shooting, we try to balance ourselves into the best position and then shoot. Your body's balance will be transformed into data. Here is the x-axis. You see the left-right movements or front-back movements on this graph, which is the y-axis. So we can observe the micro-movements of an athlete. The key to shooting lies between the technique of pulling the trigger and controlling force. Before shooting, if you can stabilize your finger on the trigger, we will normally say that the person is good at pulling the trigger, and they will produce good shooting results. The training system developed by GIACS includes lines with different colors. It indicates the shooting process of raising the gun, aiming and shooting. Through data, researchers are able to know which timings require correction. Furthermore. Researchers discovered that three seconds before shooting is the key period. When he raises his arm, the examination process has begun. We are looking at the different time points of movement. We will also look at his behavior and arming process. The force of pressing onto the trigger, like quick presses, quick triggers, and slowing tap onto the trigger, these different methods will produce different performances. So the pressure applied to a trigger is also part of our analysis. Body control and balance onto the play below will transform into data for us to analyze. For example, the shot is about 10 points. Because I shot with good stability at the zero second mark, I can see that my shot is done very smoothly. So from the given data, I know that the execution of my techniques is done properly. Both archery and shooting requires a high-level technique and good stability. As athletes utilize technological advancements, it will be easier to adjust into a better condition, increasing their chance of winning. Under the pandemic, the economy in Indonesia suffered. Sichi Indonesia Chapter and Dai TV, based in Indonesia, continue its support to impoverished families. In the past news reports, the interviewees and orphans are now helped by volunteers seeking to spread love. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.